Okay, hello everyone, and I don't know what's up with my mic today, but um, we have a developing story that occurred overnight in Jamaica, and I want to mention that Channel 1 did not send a reporter over to Jamaica to cover it this morning. They had a reporter in, well, Times Square, covering the ball drop. I didn't think I was going to have to do an additional crime video today, but in this circumstance... Especially how it happened right by a major transportation hub. And it did actually happen in transit. You know, it's my obligation as a member of Passengers United that I can talk about it. So, um, I want to mention that the Passengers United channel does have a video up. Charlton D'Souza, President and COO, did post a video earlier this morning so I will card that right now and we have a lot of developments in this story that we're going to get into in fact we also have another story that occurred in Jamaica according to the Queen's Courier where a man dropped a gun on an MTA bus so yeah I mean no surprise that uh they called Jamaica the hood for a reason and, you know, either we love Jamaica or we hate Jamaica. We all going to say this right now. Remember, Jamaica is, a, is the economic hub of the borough. It's either Jamaica or Elmhurst. Because you have a lot of retail. You have a lot of, you know, transportation. So... Let's get into the story, because it's just crazy to think what happened last night, what led up to this police altercation last night. So, this is what we know. The MTA police officer shot and killed a gunman armed with submachine gun during a Queen's confrontation. Now, from what we know today, it sounds like these were two... Long Island Railroad officers. So they were with the Long Island Railroad unit of the MTA police, it looks like. So this wasn't Transit District 20 police. So this is what we know. MTA police in Queens shot and killed a gunman armed with a submachine gun who opened fire on them last night. According to the MTA, two members of their law enforcement unit were searching for a suspect in a recent sexual assault when they came across the perpetrator, a 52-year-old man near the corner of 91st Avenue and Suffolk Boulevard, a block away from the Jamaica Long Island Railroad Air Train Station, at about 10.30 last night. Now, what they forgot to mention was the fact that this was also a block away from where the Q3031 and the Q43 bus stop is. So, they forgot to mention that in this article as well. Because I know this area very, very well, folks, alright? And I will admit, I was there a couple of weeks ago because I had to avoid gridlock in Manhattan, alright? I wasn't going to deal with the overcrowded subway, and I had to take the railroad back. I'm filming the holiday video. Staying back on topic at hand here, when the officers attempted to arrest him, the MTA police said the suspect resisted and then reached towards his waistband. Excuse me there for a second. According to authorities, he refused the officer's demands to show his hands and moments later opened fire with his weapon, which was later found to be a Mac-10 submarine gun with a 30-round extension magazine, which also known in the hood as an Uzi. Alright, so that's the slang that they use for that. Law enforcement sources said the MTA officers then returned fire with one of the shots striking the suspect in the hand. The suspect was rushed to nearby Jamaica Hospital where he was pronounced dead a short time later. So, this is interesting. This almost looks like a Glock. I'm wondering, because they're saying, no, 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 an Uzi is a bigger weapon. Uzi is a much bigger weapon. I'm not going to show it, but 
This is the type of gun that's normally seen in South Jamaica. This is a Glock. This is not a submachine gun. How in the world could these people not know what their firearms are? I mean, trust me, folks. I've been getting educated on firearms since the Sandy Hook shooting, okay? So even I know this is a Glock 40. Like, really? Two MTA officers suffered drama and were also taken to a local hospital for evaluation. A large section of the street was cordoned off by both the NYPD and MTA police for several hours as investigators combined over the scene. An array of shell casings could be seen marked by orange cones besides discarded metal gloves. Um, okay, whoever did this article, that's not how you type a paragraph. <sighs> that's another thing I learned during senior year of high school besides learning about firearms. Learning actually how to type on Microsoft Office. Anyhow. The investigation remains ongoing as per policy, the MTA notified both its Inspector General and State Attorney General Letitia James about the incident for further inquiry. Um, you do realize that this James is busy trying to put Donald Trump behind bars, right? You think she's going to want to deal with this right now? That's why the Inspector General is probably better off dealing with this situation. Alright, so again, officers are going to be okay. That's the main thing. As long as the police are fine, that's the main thing. But, yeah, just, just an awful incident. And from what was said in the press release, uh, during the press conference last night, apparently the suspect had a long rap sheet. So, imagine if we didn't have bail reform. I guarantee you, if we didn't have bail reform... In the state of New York, guarantee you this would have never happened. And speaking of bail reform, thanks to Breitbart for posting this article a couple days ago. The man who was accused of stabbing, well actually did stab the two teenage girls in Grand Central on Christmas, was of course freed weeks before by a judge in the Bronx. Mm-hmm. I mean, we talked about this a couple days ago, but, you know, it's disgusting. It's just so disgusting. I mean, it, it's so awful, you know? So that's bail reform at work, folks. I mean, you don't believe me when I say we have to do something about it, but, uh... You know how things work in Albany. Uh, it's just a broken system as usual. And that's where I'm going to leave it. So, let's get into this next story here. And then we're quickly going to take a look at NYC Alerts on X to wrap up this video. So, what happened also in Jamaica, you may be wondering. A man dropped a gun on a bus nearly hitting 10 passengers with a bullet flying on board. So, look at this. This happened Sunday, December 17th. Suspect was seated on board a Q43 bus at Southern Boulevard and Hillside Avenue when he got up as it neared its last stop near the Southern Boulevard Archer Avenue station. His handgun fell out of his pants and hit the floor of the bus according to a law enforcement source. As the firearm hit the deck, it discharged a single shot that missed 10 passengers who were running the bus as well as the driver. The suspect ran off the bus in an unknown direction and remains at large nearly two weeks later. So, this is what we know according to the Crime Stoppers. He has a medium complexion and approximately 50 years old. He was wearing a distinctive white athletic jacket with the numbers 00 over the left chest with brown and blue stripes in the upper sleeves and over a yellow hooded sweatshirt. Alright, so this is what we know from the 103rd. 12 shooting incidents. So it says 14 viewers in the 26th report at the same time last year. So yeah, I mean, the crime has gone down somewhat this year. I mean, it's still a problem, but 
again, this is the time of the year where it's going to spike. And supposedly this might have been the bus involved. You want to 8037. Which doesn't surprise me. That's the type of Nova bus they normally send down those routes. So yeah, here's a good look at the suspect, folks. I mean, if you know anything, call the Crime Stoppers or give the 103rd Priestane a call because they're looking for this guy. And lastly, let's just take a look to see if we have any other notable crime news to read this morning. We do have a confirmed commercial robbery in Queens. 92-15, 101st Avenue. Confirmed commercial robbery at gunpoint. Three male black suspects wearing all black clothing. Suspect one was last seen wearing a ski mask and a blue suit jacket. Next notable incident of crime. Actually, no, we'll get to that one last. We have a confirmed robbery in transit. This occurred... On the 182nd, 183rd Street Station on the BD line on the Grand Concourse. So the suspect is a male Hispanic wearing a ski mask, black hat. The suspect got away on a northbound D train. <clears throat> and lastly, let's get to this incident. So look at this, folks. Doesn't this remind you of the taxi that jumped the curb last year, well, almost two years ago, where I covered that incident? Almost sounds similar to it. This happened at East 27th and Park Avenue. A bicycle collision with a vehicle, aid needed with serious injuries. Up, oh, oddly, the victim went to Bellevue. <clears throat> Alright, so, uh... There you have it. I mean, it's just chaos, folks. I didn't think I was going to have to do another video today, and I hope I do not have to do another one tomorrow on New Year's Eve, but, um, you know, this is the reality we're facing, and as I said, um, there's a lot that I'm not looking forward to in the new year that I'm going to talk about on Monday, because, um, you know, I don't want to do it today. I don't want to do it tomorrow. I'm going to do it on Monday because then it'll be a new year and then we could talk about what we are facing as a city and a state. And then my personal end as well that we got to talk about. You'll see me in front of the camera on Monday because there's a lot we definitely need to talk about. The crime situation, okay, maybe I'll touch up on that. But believe me, I am going hard on Eric Adams on Monday. It's coming. Believe me, it is. So, that's it for this video.